What is up guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be looking at a gameplay of the Ohio Brothers and BTK, the newly revamped BTK 2.0. Um, I did a recent video about BTK 2.0, right? But they faced a team that's not really known or I, I don't really know them. Um, but right now, of course, uh, Zayn is against, you know, his former teammates from the Valley, which are Basic, Hoon, and Shark. And then we have Yureshi, a former NXPE um, XP laner who is actually exceptional, by the way. Um, this player as well, who's a, a really old... He's not old, he's young. But he's been playing Mobile Legends since the start, from the beginning. And he's been one of the top players since, and he hasn't stopped since. All right. Um, he tried switching games here and there, but I think he stick with ML at the end of the day. But anyways, um, before we move on to the draft, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, all that good stuff. All right. So let's get into the draft real quick. Hopefully my camera's in the middle. Let me just make sure. Yeah, hopefully it's in the middle. So we have a Fanny ban, um, Zane doesn't play Fanny, and best player does play Fanny, actually one of the best Fannies in the world, um, could have been the best if he kept playing I think. Um, they ban Valentina, pretty common ban, Kaja, pretty common ban, Joy, common ban, uh, Glue, common ban as well, and Akai is kind of different though. So they have a, a, BTK actually has an option to pick one one, alright? And I've been hearing, um, before we move on any further to the draft, um, I've been hearing like server issues when it comes to the NACT tournament. I really don't know where it's held because I'm aware of this because I played in NA back then, right? So I know when it's West server, I know when it's East server. So if you're from East and you're playing West server, the latency is like super high and it's like almost, it's not unplayable, it's just delay. And you, I would consider it still an advantage if you're playing on that side of the server. Whatever they're hosting on and you're playing on that side, of the of the US you have a slight advantage because the delay really you, you could really feel it when you're when you're moving your heroes so they first pick Frederick for Zane I'm I, I think one one is more priority for me for 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 this instead of uh, instead of Frederick but I'm guessing Zane was thinking about like oh promise is open so if you pick one one it's just gonna get counted by promise so what's the point right <laughs> so what they did is they give they gave both so to counter the Faramis and the 1-1, one, one, they picked the Farsa, and to counter the Faramis, they picked the Lapu. So it's actually not bad. BTK answered pretty well, not gonna lie. Uh, they took the Lolita. Don't know why. Usually Lolita is used to counter heroes like Kaja, Franco, and 1-1 one, one, actually. Or any any teams that are, like, their composition like to stick together. Like Estes, Faramis. You know, those those guys really like to stick. You need to stick together to make those team compositions work. And Lolito works really well um, when you're against those types of team compositions. All right. Uh, and Lolito cannot block the uh, the Farsa ulti, but she can block the second skill of Farsa. So that's not too bad. So they banned the Diggy. Um, Diggy's an all right ban because there's been a lot of Diggy players lately. A lot of people have been picking up Diggy. They paired up with Brody, with Beatrix, someone that has really high pressure in the gold lane, even Melissa, to be honest. Um, and they just snowball with the Diggy and just babysit the gold lane. So they banned the Yuzhong, just so far says, just free hit. Nobody goes into the back line too much. Pretty decent draft so far from both teams, not gonna lie. This is something that you could probably see in an MPL draft. It's maybe the bans is different, Akai. Akai, you don't really see first phase Akai being banned. Like, usually Akai is being banned in the second phase. But, I guess, um, the Ohio brothers, they're banning it um, respectively for Zane, right? So, Melissa is going to get banned there. In the laning phase, Melissa is pretty decent against 1-1, one -one, considering that she has her range. It's just, her poking capability is just really strong in the early stages of the game. And even in the later stages of the game. Um, so that's why they wanted to avoid the Melissa. They banned the Mardis as well, which is good. Mardis is good, has an immune to counter the Fredrin a little bit. It's not a direct counter to Fredrin, but it's a good jungler to go against Fredrin. So now there's still Hanzo here that they could use um, for for the Ohio brothers. I don't know if they play Hanzo. They could play Lancelot Tank. Um, what else can they play? Um, they could play. There's no Akai. There's no Mardis. Uh, what else can you play? Alice. They could play Alice right now. 
Um, but picking Alice last would be probably better because they could counter it here if they pick Alice too early. So if they pick the Hilda, not really sure why. Hilda XP. I, I don't see much Hilda XPs because she falls off a lot in the later stages of the game, especially when it comes to like sieging towers. She becomes kind of useless, but in the early stages of the game, if you could really utilize her early game capabilities, She's kind of annoying, and if she snowballs, like she could, she could one combo you. Second skill, second skill, or first skill first, and then hit, hit once. Second skill, second skill twice, and then a couple auto attacks, and then you have a full stack, and then, and then your ulti will do so much damage. So Hilda XP really needs to snowball a lot, or needs to do good in the early stages of the game. Uh, all right. So for a counter pick, what could they pick here? They need a marksman, obviously. Brody, they need like some sort of AoE damage. For me, I think Claude would have been perfect here, right? He could go, uh, Claude could counter the, the Faramis. Claude cannot, cannot get blocked by Lolita efficiently, right? Claude can get blocked, but since Claude is so fast, the movement speed is so fast, the Lolita shield most likely will not, uh, will not be able to catch up, is what I mean, right? It could get blocked, but it's not going to be able to catch up due to the Claude's movement movement speed, All right? So they picked a Kufra as well, maybe to counter this. Like a Grok would have been better here. Okay, this is where the where the draft started. Okay, it just kind of messed up from there. Um, it kind of messed up after the second phase ban, and they just okay. The Hilda is still alright. It's not the best pick, not the best XP pick, but it's still alright. It's not a bad pick. It started getting bad right here. Uh, at the second phase of BTK's draft. And uh, this one, I'm not sure yet. Actually, Hayabusa is pretty decent here, as long as he doesn't get invaded by Frederin. So they need to actually babysit two people. Lolita and Faramis need to babysit either Wan Wan or Hayabusa. Right? It's one or the other, because Wan Wan is a scaling type of gold laner. And Hayabusa against a Frederin, you just want to wish that you're not going get to get invaded. And if you do get through that early game stage and get to level 4, you're pretty much good to go, right? Um, but here, this could have been a Claude, I think. This could have been a Grok instead of a Kufra. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Brody pick. This could have been an uh, Atlas. Would Atlas would be bad because this guy would just second skill Atlas, right? And you'll get counter engage, and one one would just fly up. Um, but yeah, I think Grok would have been pretty decent against this. You have a knockup to cancel the Lolita. You're really tanky against Wan Wan. You have AoE damage for the Faramis with the ulti right while charge. And um, you could just build armor for Wan Wan. Yeah, Grok would have been really good here and Claude. Um, for uh, the Ohio Brothers side, so they picked the Hayabusa. I know best player really specializes in uh, assassins ever since like way back then. So maybe they're sticking to that, to that play style. That's why they don't want to pick like... Uh, uh, an Alice, a Lancelot tank, like he's uh, obviously Lancelot is an assassin. They could have picked a Lancelot tank. Um, even to be honest with you, even Karina could have worked here a little bit, but it's not like more. It's not as prioritized as these types of uh, types of heroes. So it's a decent pick. I'm just not a big fan of these picks right here. Uh, maybe they lack the hero pool. They don't play this that that specific hero. I don't know. All right, but anyways. All right, guys, so let's look at the gameplay and see what they do wrong or anything special they do here. Uh, from what it looks like, both teams are starting at the red buff. So this is good, actually, for Hayabusa because by the time he's level 4, he's going to be able to gank this uh, this Brody, right? Because his, his jungle pathing is towards that way. Um, Kufra actually got info earlier that Hayabusa started red because he checked the blue buff and Hayabusa was not there, so they know that Hayabusa started red. So Basic should be aware that by the time, uh, maybe at around 1 minute 20 seconds, uh, by the time Hayabusa is level 4, he might be in the gold lane. But it looks like best player's jungle pathing, he's changing it up a little bit right here. He went for the Litho first, and his jungle pathing is now towards the top lane on the XP lane. So let's see here. All right, looks like Shark's trying to steal this. Not going to be able to steal it. And Zane is going to be level 4 in about a second here. Let's see if he's gonna, who's going to get this gold crab. All right, Zane still got it, so that's good. He should just back off, but okay. 
All right, so first things first, uh, killing a roamer and you're a jungler as a trade is not worth it. And Zayn fought with no objectives in mind. Like you're you're picking a fight with no objectives in mind except for kill. So knowing Zayn, this is kind of unusual because the wait uh, the you know the caliber that I expect from him as a player. He should not be making those types of plays or calls where, oh, I'm going to fight this Lolita just because I wanted to. But the, the turtle was still 30 seconds in, right? The 30 seconds cooldown. There's, you, you're, there's no objective nearby that you could possibly take except maybe gank XP lane and just put pressure there. But another note is that if you notice here on the top side of the map, you know how when mages go to the XP lane to get level 4 with their, uh, with their, with their XP laner? As you can see from Farsa and Lapu, they should be the one being aggressive towards the Hilda. From but if you look at the minimap, um, Hilda is actually the one being the aggressor, even though it's a two v one. So it shows that Hilda is actually confident, and he wants to. He knows he could survive. But for me, like even if Hilda's doing this uh, stuff like this, you need to poke poke Hilda, because if you don't do anything and just stare at him, it's gonna make it even worse. And there's no trade. There's no poking that's happening. And he's just, uh, he's just going to zone you the whole time, right? And you can see Ohio Brothers are actually set up for a bait here because they froze the lane, right? Hilda froze the lane knowing that their, minion, their minions are going to be deep and they want to get level 4. So what they're going to do here is they're going to bait out these two players right here. And um, Lapu Lapu and Farsa is going to want to take these and fast clear this to get level 4. But what they don't know is Faramis is here. See, as you can see, they try to go for it. But Faramis is a surprise. So they got poked down and now they can't get level 4. So that's actually a really common um, counter strat that a lot of teams are doing. Because the standard rotation is just that right now, right? Mid laners go to XP before level 4. But right there... I think Zayn was thinking of rushing the turtle, thinking that Hayabusa is not going to make it on time. The problem there was Kufra did not make it on time because Lolita clears a lot faster than Kufra. Because you know how roamers clear mid on uh, before the turtle and they get level 4 once they clear it? Lolita's shield can actually absorb the minion's auto attack and then use just one second skill to just clear it really, really quickly. While Kufra is kind of late, he came from babysitting the gold lane, and now he's really late at clearing mid, and he has slow wave clear, even and he doesn't even have concussive blast, which makes it even worse for wave clear, right? He has tenacity. So he's going to be late for turtle. If Kufra got here on time, I think it would have been better for Zayn. At this point, I think Zayn was just gambling it all, thinking that Hayabusa is not going to make it on time. But this was a very exceptional play from Shark, Crowd controlling Frederin before the turtle gets killed so that Zane cannot retry, which makes it tip most likely uncontested in terms of retry. The bad part here that BTK did is yes, the turtle's already taken, you need to accept it and give it away. It's okay to get the first turtle, to let the enemy get the first turtle. It is okay, it's not the end of the world. The end of the world is if you continue fighting for no reason, again, right? If you continue fighting for no reason, Right here, let's see here. The turtle gets taken, right? The turtle gets already taken. And Lapu still hasn't ulted. So now, your, your mentality should be, oh, I should retreat and disengage. Because if we fight this, which is a 4v3, by the way, because Farsa is not even there. Farsa just got done recalling because she was low. You don't want to fight this. You're at a disadvantage at the numbers game. You're at a disadvantage of uh, of the team fight because they have Faramis ulti, first of all. Uh, and Zayn is quite low. He's at 50% HP. So overall, fighting this after the turtle gets slain is not a good idea. It just made it worse when Lapu came in, which gives them more kills, which gives the Ohio brothers more kills and more chances to snowball, right? So he even wasted a flicker right there. See, he, he wasted a flicker right there. This guy wasted a feather airstrike as well. All these little things, the skill management, 
the spell management. If you're dead and you think you're not gonna get away, just don't even waste your spell on it. Because maybe you could use your spell somewhere else useful where you can actually, you know, use it efficiently and have a trade for it. He used his flicker there, having no trades for it, and they lost the turtle. This farce is not even poking the Faramis at all, and he, she's just standing still. Look, look, look. Okay. Does Kufra know that Faramis is here? Let's see. Okay. Kufra, know that, Kufra knows that Faramis is here. He should call it. So Farsa should be aware that Faramis is on this side of the map. So her not knowing that she's about to get poked on that side of the map, it's just maybe miscoms from me. But look. What are you doing? Did she just use first skill on one minion? Oh, she doesn't... She, she didn't even use second skill yet. Oh, she just did. But yeah, like, Kufra should be feed, feeding you this information. Promise is on that side of the map, so your your the body language of your hero should be on this side to avoid any pokes, right? Or if you really want to wave clear fast, you should have saved your ulti from earlier that you wasted and just use your ulti to wave clear this and then rotate somewhere else. But because there's a uh, there's Hayabusa that might gank mid lane, that's why you need to be careful when you're clearing by yourself at mid. But right here we see a typical two v two at the gold lane, which is quite popular in this in this meta. That's why we've been seeing a lot of Diggies, Estes, good ulti from Shard just to force the retry. You see how they're not forcing plays; they just wanna. Have the spell advantage, have the positioning advantage. They don't even care if they waste ultis. They know that the next team fight. Oh, this guy doesn't have flicker, so let's take advantage of it. All right, Zane wants to fast clear, but he gets caught by Hayabusa. That's the hard part of playing Farsa when there's a Haya. I wouldn't say that that's a mistake from Farsa, because I'm pretty sure Zane called that they wanted to fast clear mid from from the looks of it, from the body language of the hero. But we see here, Theo actually is in the long bush, and he he might want to pick off here. But Brody does not have ulti. Yeah, they're just bullying this mid lane at this point. Why did this guy even go here? Yeah, okay. Rule of thumb, yes. Yes, Kufra did not die. But a rule of thumb, when you don't control the mid lane bushes and you don't have info... On where the enemy at, is at. Actually, he does have a little bit of info. Lolita is right here. And he's not scared. You know, Shark is not scared of any of these bush. Because considering his body language. Uh, the hero's body language. Um, if Lolita didn't know that. You know, oh, Farsa is not here. And Farsa showed mid, by the way. Um, these are called the death edges. Right here. Four. At mid. One. Two. Three. Four. If you don't have control on this eye bush, I call it an eye bush because it's shaped like a letter I kind of. Uh, left eye bush, right eye bush. You need to go the long route and go around instead of going here, which is going to get you poked. If you don't die, you're going to get poked and you're going to have to recall, which basically kind of deems you almost dead because you're going to have to recall and walk back in lane again. So now Kufra is going to recall, right? It's like a semi-kill in a way, and they get to set up Turtle a lot better. The good thing for BTK is Lolita doesn't have ulti. That's the only good thing that they have going. And Zayn forcing things again. He did get the Turtle. He wanted to rush it. And um, this is actually really good from best player. He didn't even contest. Even though the Turtle's about to be up, best player was like, oh, screw that Turtle. Just... Make sure he uses red tree when you guys are uh, when he does the turtle. Just make sure, and then he trades for a red buff right here. So this is, this this thing usually happens if you're an assassin against a utility jungle because utility jungles are a lot stronger on team fights and turtle fights, right? So that's why best player actually did this. He did not even go for the red buff. He went for a kill on Brody actually, but he failed. Let's see if he's gonna get it. He's taking quite long. Um, let's see that again. Okay, so if we go back to it, we see that one one actually went aggressive here, and one one got a ulti on Brody, almost killing Brody. So how exactly did Hayabusa not kill this right away with one HP? Oh, he messed up his shadow. His shadow messed up right there. 
The, the shadow did not directly hit Brody, which made it harder to kill this Brody. But in my opinion, if best player was a little bit more patient with his shadow, this kill should have been really easy. Like, just wait, just go right here. You don't have to do anything. Just walk. Walk here on this bush right here. Brody is not going to be able to recall. If he does end up recalling, you could shadow, and then he gets scared. He's most likely going to use second skill, and then you can use your, your shadow again to get that last hit on him. But he kind of rushed it, so which made it harder right here, see? He almost died. He might even die here. Yeah, he's dead. See what I mean? Kind of messed up from best player right there. Uh, minor mistake, mechanical error, I would say, and kind of impatient. Kind of rushed the, uh, the shadow. But this is good from Zane. So he got the turtle and Zane. Uh, knowing Zane, he got the info that Hayabusa was bot lane. So he went to invade. So that's good. The experience coming in from Zane, the the knowledge that he has. I actually thought best player was gonna go for the red buff and then gank Brody. That would have been the best thing that best player could have done, but he didn't. So it shows a little bit of inexperience from his side. Why is this guy even like so overextended? All right, why is Brody even? S okay. This was the problem here. You see Kufra, right? You see Kufra? Alright, so Kufra wants to give vision to Brody. Right? Just look at the minimap. The problem here is Kufra is face checking ahead of time. When you're guiding your marksman, you don't want to be on a bush and face check ahead of time because there are chances, there are timings where the enemy roamer or enemy or any enemy could could go to where your marksman is be hard to hard to explain but hopefully you get what i mean he face checked to the triple bush way ahead of time look where brody is and look where he's at um in terms of brody's positioning kufra should be giving vision here or here right one of the two bushes and as soon as brody gets into lane that's where he starts going here all right because if kufra was here or here there is a chance that he would see lolita here right but they but like i said he got timing so the timing was not in his favor which didn't give any info on where this lolita is that's why brody was so confident oh i have a tank on the triple bush nobody's gonna be here on the long bush or the short bush here that's why he was so overextended and because of kufra um face checking too early or ahead of the bush they, they got punished for it. And he even went the long route for some reason. He even went the long route. I guess they just assumed that this is clear. That's why. So I guess it makes sense. But yeah, they got punished for it. So for Theo, please don't face check ahead of time. That's another, that's another, Theo, that's another mistake right there. We, we're, we weren't even done with the first mistake yet. This is another one. All right. Imagine your marksman getting killed, right? Killed. Killed. He's still holding the first skill, right? So if you think about it, even if Kufra gets a five-man ulti here, where's your follow-up? Farce is all the way mid. Look at where you're at. <laughs> Look at where you're at. Marksman is dead. He's not going to follow up. Frederick is farming blue buff. He's not going to follow up. Lapu is all the way top lane. Obviously, he's not going to follow up. So what's the point of using your first skill here if your marksman is already dead? You're just giving them more kills. So that's another mistake right there. <laughs> Why? 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 I don't understand. And, and okay, I'm going to I'm gonna be generous to this guy, Theo. Let's say Farsa... Farce is here. Let's say Farce is here. I'm, I'm going to be super generous. All right? Let's say Farce is here. Did, does he think that he's not going to get traded or anything? Hayabusa still has ulti. Farce is not going to be able to kill all these guys, I think. A 0-1 Farsa. Although Faramis does not have ulti, I guess maybe he's thinking like, oh, maybe Farsa could make it in time and then get a kill or two or one kill maybe and then run away. But what, what most likely would happen is Farsa would just Feather Airstrike here, maybe kill one, hopefully, 
But Kufra is gonna die as well, so it would it would have been a one for one trade still, which doesn't make it worth it. It's actually better to just reset and just regroup instead of going for a fight every single time. Okay, nice poke from Farsa right there to stop the invade from Haya. So that's good. That's good right there. But yeah, Kuf Theo, come on, bro. But, but I feel it. I mean. He's still new. Oh, this is good from Zayn. This is good. Oh my god, Shark. So lucky. That's like 1 HP right there. So lucky. There you go. There you go. Oi. The, 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 Yuna! Why? Why are you ulting when 1-1's one in the air? Watch. Watch. 1-1 one one is in the air, which makes her invulnerable. Immune, or not immune. Cannot hit, you cannot hit her, right? Right there, already in the air. Already in the air, Brody hasn't thrown the ulti yet, right? Right there, he even used one first skill. He even used an auto attack right there, right? So why, he just used ulti again? What? Oh, nice Actually, they could have gotten that kill if Brody was more aggressive here. Right here. If Brody was more aggressive here, Knowing that, well, he probably doesn't know if Zayn was going to die or not. I don't know what the items are at. If Zayn has armor, if you look at his items, if Zayn has armor, and most likely Zayn would probably say, oh, I'm alive even if, even if this guy, even if this guy OTs on me. So they need to communicate that a little bit better. And that's where the new team comes in, right? They need to build chemistry and synergy. If Zayn knows that he's not going to die, he could have told Yuna to just go aggressive and this guy's not going to kill me. By the time 1-1's ulti is done, he could kill basic really easily. This is easily punished. Because look, Zayn was not even close to dying. Alright, he was not even close to dying. Although Hayabusa was there to actually try and counter engage. And Faramis was there with no ulti, right? They could have killed the 1-1. Who is actually snowballing right now? Who's 2-0-1? That's one thing that you don't want to happen. 1-1 one, one getting to late game. And killing 1-1 one, one delays 1-1 delays one, one getting to late game. So that's what I mean by that. They could have punished that 1-1. One, one. Okay, Theo. What was that? Why, 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 why is he... I don't know why he's jumping. Because first of all, he knows that there's nobody here. Why? Because Zane is here. If anybody was here... He has vision. Zayn would see it. So why is he jumping there? Or maybe he was going for Hoon and it was just really far. <laughs> he was going for Hoon and it was just really far, maybe. I, I don't know. So first of all, yeah. There's nobody there. Or maybe he just missed so bad. Second of all, the turtle got reset. So you, you, you don't need to engage. Yes, nothing happened. But things like this could get punished really easily if you're in the, M in the MPL. Like, mess up a first skill like that and you're out of position, they will punish you and poke you. Right? So you don't want to do those type of things. 1-1 one, one is just trading this to get the top lane. Good trade for, for me, if I was to be ass. I would rather go for a turtle. I, I would rather go for a tower than a turtle, in my opinion. That gives more map pressure. And it's both global gold. So. Okay. I don't know why this guy engaged again. You see, you see this stuff? You, are you seeing this? Like, Shark is just provoking him. This is what... Uh, things like um, Yahweh. You, you, you would see Yahweh recall in front of enemies. He's not doing it for no reason. He's not doing it to be... Oh, he's... Part of it is being cocky. Yes, yes, yes. Part of it is being cocky. But he's doing it to aggravate and control you emotionally and kind of piss you off. And when you piss someone off, people like Theo falls for it and gets baited by it and they get punished by it. Right? So he's kind of just pissing him off. Theo falls for it, wastes a flicker. He doesn't die, but there's no flicker, right? Spells are really important in this game, whether you like it or not. Spells are very, very important. Especially in the Kufra, because if you mess up first skill, you don't have any escape anymore, right? That's the hard part. So Theo, 
I don't know. Many, many errors from Theo. Uh, a couple of errors from Yuna. Dalapu has been quiet. Uh, yeah, he had an early game error earlier. But at this point, it's just watching the Ohio brothers snowball. That's it. Alright. For Amis ulti, just to make sure one one doesn't die because of the Feather Airstrike. Nice. That was a really good punish from Zayn. Because um, the, uh, the Ohio brothers got kind of greedy there. But let's see if the Ohio brothers can get it back up. A lot of fights, huh? Oh, Zane just... Zane still wanted Lolita. He's mad. He dashed it. He could have gone away. I don't know if he still... Yeah, he still gets away, I think. Ooh! Oh my god, Zane. He's trying to be a hero right now. He's trying to carry this team so bad. But it's hard. With Fredrin, it's, it's, it's hard to carry with Fredrin. Especially against, like, four experienced players. Yeah, I could tell Zane is trying really hard to carry. Because if you notice, like, the turtle fights, he would start it alone. Right? Most of the time. And he, it's like he's doing his own thing. And then uh, his mindset is like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to carry. So I'm going to do this by myself. That's that's what's that's the message it's giving me right now. That's the vibe it's giving me. Zayn is trying so hard to carry, but in some ways it's kind of bad. That's not how you. That's not a habit you want to build. What the hell? How did Hilda get that? First of all, Hayabusa was stunned because of the Faramis ulti. Second of all, Farsa ultied way too early on that last feather airstrike. Hayabusa should have been dead if Hayabusa, uh, if uh, Farsa delayed the feather airstrike just one second, if you could see. Uh, so Hayabusa is stunned, right, from, from Kufra. And then he gets Faramis ulted, gets taunted, okay? And then Faramis ulti is out, right? Gets silenced. And then the feather airstrike went in too early right there, that last one. But if Farsa waited, this Hayabusa could have been dead. See, Farsa, uh, Hayabusa would have been dead if Farsa delayed it just a little bit. The problem was, Zane has Retri, right? This guy has Retri, still alive as well, not getting CC'd anymore. Hilda ended up getting it. So if we slow-mo, I think Zane Retri'd first. Uh, right there, it was at 600 HP. So when Zane Retri'd, it got to 600 HP. And then Hilda just last hit when it when it came to 300 HP. Hmm, that's that's quite far. That is unusual for Zane. Zane is usually known for really good retries, to be honest. Like even during the the M series, a player of his caliber retrieving the Lord, and he wasn't even low too. Like he's not pressured, he's not low, so he would just focus on the HP of the Lord, right? He shouldn't be retrieving that early. It would have been okay if the if, if he retreated and then there was still like 100 HP left or 200 HP left, but 600 HP, that's a big gap for a player his caliber, right? I'm not trying to bash Zayn. I just expected more from him because I know he's that good. Zayn is that good. Zayn is that good. But let's see here. They're going to try to clear this Lord. I think they should just give this, yeah. <laughs> This guy just likes to jump. Don't give this guy Kufra again. He just likes to jump. Like, your, your team is disengaging, right? Your team is disengaging because there's a Lord coming in. Your, your, uh, your mindset should be, oh, we want to defend this Lord. So let the Lord push in so the tower can help us defend this Lord. And just let us clear. But if he engages, it's really hard to fight towards this side, like outside the, outside the towers because they're so ahead, right? So what's the point of jumping for this? Plus one one has a second skill for, <laughs> well, for purify. I would understand maybe if one one used second skill, to uh to purify the Frederin second skill taunt. Let's say, I would understand. But one one still has second skill at this point. Right, and there's even Faramis there, with purify. So I don't know Theo again. Why? <laughs> Wasted a flicker again, right? Wasted a flicker again. Uh, but yeah, let's see here. 
looks like the, it, it's it's pretty much a one-sided game so far and yes btk did get two turtles but i don't think it matters because the whole time ohio brothers had some type of trade even when zane got the the turtle God, one it, it's late game and yeah kind of greedy from from basic i would say but i don't blame him because it's so one-sided Obviously, if you're playing a more serious match, I, I I don't think Basic is gonna do that. But looking from that play, the the uh, the, the way Basic died, I don't think he's respecting the enemy right now, right? Because if he respected the enemy, after his ulti, he would have backed off and just focused on tower. But he still wanted to go for more, so uh, he's just really confident. Right? Um, but yeah, it's kind of, in a way, disrespecting the enemy. Right? But yeah, let's see here. They're probably just going to wait for the next Lord. Skip through it. Alright, uh, this is a good setup, but I think a little bit too early from Shark. Yeah, this is way too early from Shark, I would say. If I was Shark, I would I would just wait for, for them to come. It, it's like when you're fishing, right? When you're fishing, um, you you throw your rod, whatever, the fishing rod, the, the hook on the fishing rod, you throw it in the water, and you wait for the fish to bite, right? Instead of you going for the fish and getting, in, getting the fish yourself, you wait for the fish to bite, and then you pull. I think that's what shark needs to, to do more. Instead of being impatient, I guess. Impatient is how you could say it. But then again... Like, he could be playing like this just because they're so ahead, right? They're so ahead, they don't care. Here we go, Shark doesn't have... Oh, he ha he actually has ulti already, surprisingly. He has green light right there. They know they're so ahead, they want to make it a numbers game right now, so they're trying to go for a pickoff. They get a pickoff right there, two people dead. Um, They're going to go for a Lord after getting those two p uh, people right there and just push with the Lord, probably. Oh, they, they just want to fight at this point. Like, look, look at this. The disrespect from from the Ohio brothers. I don't know if it's disrespect or just plain confidence. Right? I don't know. I, I really don't know because they're so ahead. <laughs> they're so ahead. This is a la by a landslide that they could just do the, these types of plays. Yeah, they, 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 made, they made BTK look like little kids. I'm not going to lie. And... That's the that's the truth, honestly. It's a hard pill to swallow, but that's what it looks like. Yeah, these guys made made BTK look like they're like little kids, public players, rank game players. But yeah, it's a one-sided game. I don't know. BTK has a lot to work on. Maybe next I'll look at Gosu. I, I'm kind of curious what Gosu, um, how Gosu plays like right now but yeah gg well played one-sided game i mean it wasn't a surprise for me to be honest because i know the ohio brothers players all of them actually i know of them whereas btk uh, a lot of a lot of unknown names for me so they're probably newer to the game i guess so they don't have the same experience and knowledge as the ohio brothers obviously the tournament as well. The tournament setting is a lot different, right? The the adrenaline is different, and the pressure is a lot different when you're playing in tournament compared to rank. So maybe they just need more experience for BTK. But the roamer really need uh, specifically the roamer really needs to step up for BTK. Um, I don't know if Zane could guide um, Theo in how to roam. Because obviously Zayn is not a Rome player, but he knows how Shark plays, so maybe he could guide him in that direction. Cause Shark is pretty damn good as a really good as a Romer actually. For a non MPL player, Shark is up there, and yeah. So I think that's it for today's video. I think for the next one, I might do Gosu analysis. All right, I'll look for a good game from Gosu and check out how they're doing and see if they have. Um, any mistakes or if they're doing well um, and all that how they do in the draft and all that 
But before we leave, don't forget to subscribe, hit the uh, notification bell, hit the like button, and that's all. Peace.